or the former representative from wherever the heck he's from. I don't really care about it. But Ben Unger, terrible guy, bunch of uh, um, uh, public employees unions run it. What their sales pitch is going to be is this. Large out-of-state corporations are not paying their fair share. I just gave you the sales pitch. That's the sales pitch. <coughs> and then the addendum to that will be for education, for health care, so on and so forth. Remember that every penny that's raised from IP28, if it were to pass, goes into the general fund. You can wish and hope and pray and, ho and, 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 and do whatever you want, shout hallelujah, that it's going to go to education and health care. It's going into the general fund. And if Democrats are in control of the general fund, it's goodbye. It goes into the great deep black hole that is the general fund. So that's one fact I wanted to give you that you need to understand. Here's another that's important. It shifts the state's tax base towards gross sales receipts while reducing the reliance on personal income tax. Now, I don't want somebody to say, yeah, wait a minute. I, I think it'd be good to have a sales tax because then the three-legged stool and so on and so on and so forth. This is not a sales tax. Per se. In other words, you aren't going to go in and pay six cents on a one dollar item. Here's how it's going to work, and this is why it's so dangerous and so terrible. And, and I'm giving you a really, really, really brief one on this. IP28 specifies that the revenue generated from the corporate minimum tax increase is to be used to provide additional funding for early childhood, kindergarten, K through 12, health care, and other services. But this is done through the general fund. So I want to make that point. I already did. IP28 modifies the corporate minimum tax, modifies it. We already have a corporate tax, thanks to measure 66 to 67. Okay, so it's going to add to it. So again, let me get some more numbers. This is the part where I think that you, it starts resonating with people. Again, this is a state agency is telling you it will slow employment growth and accelerate public sector growth. Estimated public sector growth by 17,700 jobs by 2022. 38,200 jobs in private sector lost. More state employees, less regular folks getting jobs. That's what's going to happen. This is a state agency telling you this, guys. It's not a partisan group. It's not Cascade Policy Institute. And I love Cascade, but what I'm saying is this is not, you know, this is not them. This is the state telling you, ah! Okay? <laughs> Here is how, here, okay, I, I don't want you to raise your hand, but let's say you make less than $21,000 a year. You're the, you're the poorest of the poor in Oregon. You're going to get hit the hardest. 0.9% decrease in your personal income. Now, if you make more than $206,000 a year, you're going to get hit by 0.4% hit to your income. But the poorest are going to get hit the hardest. You know, the people that want the education and the health care. Their money's going to be taken away. This is what people are not talking about and what needs to be talked about. Let me give you a specific. If you make less than $21,000 a year, currently your tax rate is 9.29%. It's going to go up to 10.09%. That's a 0.80% difference up. If you make less than 21, the poorest of the poor, their tax rate's going to go up. So if you were sitting here going, oh, what about the 1%? The 1% are still going to live on yachts and stuff. Nothing's changing for them. Not that I'm against that, but I'm just saying, we're going to hurt the poor people with a corporate tax. How does it work? I want to give you examples, real-world examples. Uh, oh, by the way, I love this. Major company that's endorsing IP28. You, maybe you shop there. I don't. We don't have them in Kaiser. We, we don't like these kind of people. New Seasons. It's not our kind of store. We go to Safeway. Good American store. Safeway. New Seasons, by the way, will not pay under this because of the way they're organized. But they're pro IP28. Well, of course, it doesn't cost me anything. Okay. The people that it will hit, the kind of companies that will, I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to give you examples. I brought so much stuff with me, but I don't want to waste all your time with this. I just want to hit you with highlights. Uh, this is the one that really hits me because my district is very agriculture. If you've never come down to my area, please come down. My district is Kaiser to St. Paul to Newburgh. From five feet out of Kaiser to St. Paul, it's all agriculture. From two feet out of St. Paul all the way to Newburgh, it's all agriculture. It's all farms. Everything in my district is farms. Wilco is the major farm supplier for almost every farm that I know of. If IP28 passes, this is, this is fascinating. Their tax increase will be 1,388% based on their recent sales. They will go from $168,000 a year in taxes to $2.5 million per year. 
And that would only apply to the $100 million in sales at Wilco Farm Stores in Oregon. There's other places they make money outside of just Oregon. Wilco typically nets between 25 to 3.75% of gross sales. This tax is 2.5% of gross sales. So in other words, they just made zero money. I have another example. Car dealer friend of mine, the Power Auto Group, big, big dealership in Salem. They have six dealerships. They gross, I talked to Jeff Conkey, the owner, I said, what do you do? He says, we do about $92 million a year. I said, what's your, what's your net? He said, about 1.9%. Oh, so in other words, you're gonna be losing money on this. Yeah. I said, what are you gonna do, Jeff? He says, I'm moving to Vancouver. We're gonna go up to Auto Row, we'll put up stores up there. This is real, real world stuff, folks. IP28 is, let me, let me give you one last example. Unlike a sales tax, as I mentioned earlier, this is a tax that is a regressive tax. An example, let me use the Buick guy, my, my guy at Power Buick GMC. So you decide you want to buy a Buick, a Buick Regal, whatever. He pays 2.5% to buy that Buick. Then you pay 2.5% to buy that Buick from him. That's now 5%. And then because he might be a manufacturer or there's a manufacturer involved, that's another 2.5%. So that now brings it to 7.5%. Guess who pays?